this is so many things that we're excited about doing. Uh, Laura, we're, we're, uh, it's such a change of pace from the job I do. Nine to five, ten months out of the year, looking for something exciting to do on my hiatus. I don't get that off. Uh, I don't. I don't get offered that many period pieces. And then uh, once I started digging in there and finding out, uh, uh, you know, uh, when Gail Ann Hurd's name's attached to it, uh, Glenn Morgan's name's attached to it. Uh, it's Amazon, Aaron Mankey. Checking out the podcast, checking him out, seeing the, the following. Uh, then I opened up the script and I actually looked at it and saw the, excuse me, the different ways that they were going to tell the story. I found that really interesting. Uh, it's like a it's like a, a television show for people that have ADD. ADD, you know, it's like. If you're not following us along this way, here, we'll do some illustrations for you. <laughs> oh, and here's some black and white footage, photographs, and uh, oh, and there's some live actors doing some things. I'm not making fun, because it's actually it's, it's actually really, really neat. And you're going, wow, this is cool. So uh, it took me out of my scorpion world. And I, 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 I was lucky. I, have, I had like... Uh, Six, five or six projects to do in my past hiatus, and this kicked it off and just totally took me out of that, which is great. I got to get out of. Kind of shake it off. Yeah, I'm an actor. I'm a. You know, I like being different people. And can you talk a little bit about your character and what was it exactly when you read the script? Have you guys seen it? I've seen like bits and pieces. Okay. Well, I just need to know so I can tell you. Yeah. yeah. And like, what is it exactly that latched onto you when you read it from the script? Well, I play a, a I play a, a, a reverend in the 1840s. So you know, you wrap your head around what the 1840s were like. He loves his wife. She dies unexpectedly. She's older. He remarries. Uh, he's got a, a, a widow that he remarries. She has two kids. They relocate to Connecticut. They have a beautiful mansion in Connecticut. He's a, a very well-regarded guy. And he hears about these seances that are coming around. And there's a lot of question about actually talking to people in the afterlife. And is it possible? And if you believe in the afterlife. And how that... Co uh, corresponds to his faith and his belief uh, that was really really interesting to me and uh, the actual evolution of the seances and how they were going and, and people were duping people and but he earnestly wants to go in there and he wants to find his wife and see if he can't tell her he loves her one last time because she dies unexpectedly and um, I mean, she was sick, but I mean, I, you know, I, I, he, he, that feeling of you wanting to communicate one more time. And that was intriguing to me. Um, that, that was, you know, the, the hook. Because, you know, my, my dad's dead, and, and that's fairly recent, like three years ago. And, and, um, I just did the Long Island Medium recently, and I had never experienced being with a medium and didn't really know much about it. To sit with somebody and they can connect with this other realm or world that's out there, and uh, who am I to say if it exists or not, you know? I mean, none of us know for sure. So that uncertainty of it's a real thing. Maybe it's. You know, maybe it's not. That's what I think is a, is appealing. When I was growing up there, there's all sorts of stories about when I was in high school and stuff like, you know, the. I guess it's your parents maybe that tell you about the, the, you know, the high school couple making out and you're back at Lovers Lane. And yeah. Of course, we had a Lovers Lane when I was there. <laughs> you'd go and you'd be with your girlfriend and you'd be steaming up the windows. And, <laughs> You're complete, and then also, what was that? What was that? 
you know, your mind just goes, right? right? And of course you, I think the folklore for that one was <laughs> is the guy that was hanging from the tree and scraping the back window or something. I don't Beautiful know. Look. Yeah, yeah, that was it, that was it, that was it, right? Yeah, that's what so my you dad hear all that me. stuff and you're going like, where did that come from? Yeah. And I think that's what Aaron's got going that's so appealing is uh, somebody started these things. Are they based in fact or uh, did just somebody start those things? You know, like Texas Main, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The one that came out when I was young. That's a scary fucking movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's super eight, low budget quality. And as a matter of fact, Gail's movie, uh, Terminator, the original. Um, uh, that movie has a low budge feel to it that's all, all it's actually scarier than the big budget movie that I did. Um, and there's that, I don't know, this the aesthetic, I think, of, mm-hmm. of that. But, you know, it's a great pedigree to be involved with. Gail and uh, Aaron and Glenn and Amazon. I like to be a part of groundbreaking technology. Storytelling. Right? Yeah. Storytelling. So, uh, it had its allure, and I'm excited to do it. And I think they're going to tell some great stories. The cool thing, too, is, think about this. Let me plant this seed. Because these are new stories, and even though they don't have a regular cast, they could bring me back again for another season as a different guy. Like American Horror Story? I'm going to pitch that idea to somebody. Mm-hmm. Definitely. It's a great idea. Why don't you ask one of them, say, Robert Patrick suggested that he's actually a part of your ensemble and he expects to be invited back every season to do another character. See how that goes over. I'm just curious, what happens to you when you walk out on the floor at Comic-Con? Like... <laughs> I get uh, a lot of nice friends and people that have supported me over the years saying, hi, can I get a picture? And it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great question. It's a delayed gratification for them that we are here together at the same time. Because you got to remember, they saw me in their movie theater wherever they grew up. And that's their first impression of me. And then to actually cross paths would be like if we were at, on Broadway seeing a play and you waited by the stage door to meet your favorite actor. It's that kind of thing, but it's happening, you know, years down the line. Awesome. That's what I like in it, too. What would be a story that you'd want to do if you kind of come back? you want to be the guy with the coat <laughs> scraping the car? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We pitched it. There's not a lot of acting involved with that. No. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? What are some of the talents that you have admired over the years and never had the opportunity of working with, but still looking forward to possibly working with them in the near future? Some of the the talented artists and people that that you would love to work oh, with. Oh God, had there's a so many, man. Yeah. There are so many people out there. Jesus. And I've been very fortunate to work with a lot of great people, but. Uh, there's so many people out there. I would love to work with. Oh my god! Like one that just like pops in your mind. Every Anthony so Hopkins would be a guy. Definitely, that'd be great. With. You, you know, and Anthony in the same film. Uh, there's so many wonderful, wonderful, talented people out there. And jeez, uh, directors. I mean, uh, I'm also, I'm also curious. So I don't know if you've heard recently, but of course, uh, the new Terminator installment film is yeah. supposed to be taking place yeah. right after Judgment Day. What sure. are your thoughts on that? I think it's great. I think it's a great idea. I think it's it's fantastic for the franchise that Jim Cameron is the one that's doing it. Right, exactly. Because he's the guy. I mean, if you look at if you look at the movies in that franchise, Terminator, Terminator 2, those are the movies that I think... Uh, body the franchise is the best. No disrespect to anybody 
than any of the other movies right, right. that follow. But I think Jim's the common denominator in him being involved, at least as a producer, uh, is going to bring it back a little bit more towards uh, more, definitely. You know what we had going in T2. But I think it's fantastic. I'm excited for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thank, thank you, so you guys.